I not only agreed with her, but thrilled at her passion, values, and desire for social justice. Shut up! Shut up! You're a liar. You're lying to everyone, Matt Damon. And you know it. You know you're lying. Matt Damon is a liar. He's a liar. The man lies. He's lying to you right now. He's lying to all of America. And we gotta expose it. We're gonna expose it here today. We're gonna do it before we get into this one. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Keep this content flowing. I really appreciate it. Let's get into the news. Why did I use that intro? Not the correct intro. I stole that from another YouTuber. Maybe some of you know who it is. Look, here's the deal. Matt Damon's in the news. Matt Damon's in the news for what I would say is a stupid, stupid story. I mean, the, the actual story is like, whatever, it's a little interesting. The original story was Matt Damon still says he used. Now we're, we're going we're gonna to skirt around this word. I think some of you know what the word is. Starts with an F. Very offensive to a certain community, the gay community. Okay, I think you know what word we're talking about. We'll get into it. Matt Damon says he still used that horrible slur up until some months ago. He stopped using it. Oh, that's progress. That's progress. Here with a vulture. Or actually, we'll, we'll go straight to the source, which was actually a interview with... Uh, you know what? We won't go to the source because they're trying to get me to agree to some stupid thing. Get, what is these ads? Nonsense. I know I need an ad blocker. I'll get on it. Okay. So Matt Damon says that he, he up until now was using this slur. Now, I assume using it in a private context. Maybe he's at home. He gets upset. Uses that slur. Okay, is it is that bad? I, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a major part of your vocabulary. But to be clear, Matt Damon grew up in Boston at a certain time, a certain time when certain words were very, very popular. And we'll get into that. Trust me, we're gonna talk on that topic. But he he still used this term in private, I assume. And uh, his daughter, who is a little more progressive as kids these days are, kids these days are a little more uh, woke. We'll say for good or for bad, sometimes maybe on the right side of history, sometimes the kids are a little nuts, but his daughter took offense to it and said, Daddy, Daddy, Big Daddy Matt, who frankly has, has probably given her the greatest lifestyle of all time, and I would not question my father at all. I'd go, thank you for the millions of dollars and the beautiful mansion and all these things, but fine, Dad, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you a little something. I don't like when you say that word. Hurts me, hurts, hurts this community. And wrote him uh, what, what he called a treatise. Which is a I know I know this word, but I want the actual I want the the actual definition. It's it's like an essay, a written work dealing formally and systematically with a subject, a comprehensive treatise. I don't know how to pronounce it. She wrote him a little essay, a little book report. Dad, here's why you shouldn't say this word. Here's why it's offensive. I would like to read this report. I want to see five hundred words, a thousand words. How how good of a wordsmith is Matt Damon's daughter? We'll never know. And uh, he says. I made a joke months ago. My daughter brings this to me. He says, come on, that's a joke. I say it in the movie Stuck on You. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know it was in a movie. I didn't know. I wonder if we can find that clip. Probably probably not. I bet Matt Damon's publicists are burying that clip right now. She went to her room, wrote me a big, long, I'm not going to say the word, essay on how that word is dangerous. And I declared, I retire. The F slur. I understood. All right. There's a couple different ways. There's a couple different ways to take this. Is it really brave for a how old 50-year-old man to stop saying one word? Eh, whatever. Whatever. But he's telling a little story. He's telling, you know, it is it is an interesting story. Here's the thing that happened in my family. Here's how I'm dealing with raising a daughter and learning, you know, what sort of thing she is and what's, you know, what she's learning and teaching me. Cute little story. Cute little story. Uh let's see if we can find uh Matt Damon controversy. Uh, let's see. I want to. I want to find the. Uh, let's see. Twitter drags Matt Damon. Twitter. Twitter drags them. Allow ads. I thought I already do allow ads. My God. All right. Pause it on this say once. One time. Los Angeles Times. Okay. So he told the Sunday Times this. And Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> First of all, don't. We gotta. We gotta. As a society, agree. We're not gonna listen to anybody on Twitter. Everybody on Twitter is an idiot. Everybody on Twitter is always wrong. Why are we letting, like, five loudmouths determine the course of human history? We need to stop. 
Uh, legal analyst uh, Adrian Lawrence tweeted, If Matt Damon's using homophobic slurs at the dinner table, you can't tell him he's not using racist slurs too. <laughs> so he's also racist now. Oh my god. Uh, why do white people volunteer so much information no one asks for? That's a verified user. My favorite thing about Matt Damon is that he told on himself. That's yeah, an interesting little story about growing up and, uh, you know, learning lessons. Being an older man who's coming to terms with a new generation that doesn't let you toss certain words around. I mean, whatever. Uh, just outstanding that he, Matt Damon told us I learned how to not use a homophobic slur at 50 like it was a heartwarming anecdote of lifelong learning. I don't know, man. It was an interesting story. I wasn't upset about it. But of course... Okay, so you get you get into this kerfuffle. You're Matt Damon. You're a famous actor. All you want is for people to go see your movies. You tried telling a little story you thought was cute and funny, and uh, Twitter Twitter reacts. Why do we listen to Twitter? Stop doing it. But we do listen to Twitter. The stupidest little things go viral. I have to make a video about that, by the way. I had a thing go viral, which should not have gone viral. I'll talk about that. But uh, Matt Damon, and this is ridiculous, and this is silly, and Matt Damon is just lying. He's lying to your face. Matt Damon insists. No, no, no. No no notifications. Matt Damon insists. He never used the F slur. I stand with the LGBTQ plus community. He even stands with the pluses. Okay. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. We First of all, we know he's lying because he, he already said... Was the story made up? He had a story. He had a story that says, I still use the, the thing, I still use the word, and then I stopped using it. Once you put that story out, you can't go, I never said it, you just admitted to it. Okay. In an article, okay, yeah, the whole thing that we already saw. All right, here's, here's what he's saying. He says he never used the word in his personal life, does not use slurs of any kind, understands why the interview led many to assume the worst. During a recent interview, I recalled a discussion, this is him talking, I had with my daughter where I attempted to contextualize for her the progress that has been made, though by no means completed, since I was growing up in Boston and as a child heard this horrible word on the street before I even knew what it referred to. I explained that word was used constantly and casually, and it was even a line of dialogue in a movie of mine as recent as 2003. I feel so bad for Matt Damon. I didn't want to say it. The horrible movie put it in the script. I can't believe they made me say it. She expressed incredulity. Did I say that right? Incredulity. I'm terrible at words. That there could have ever been a time where that word was used unthinkingly. Really? Incre you couldn't? You, incredulity? You couldn't You couldn't possibly wrap your head around the, the idea that there was a time when we used words. and then th they, That is just, we know this. There's some words I want to bring back, and I'm not going to tell you which ones, but... They were great words, and I missed them. All right? Not not to offend anybody. I didn't say what the word is. You don't know what it is. It could be any of them. Okay? I explained it, blah, 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 to my admiration and pride. She was extremely articulate about the extent to which that word would have been painful to someone in the community, regardless of how culturally normalized it was. I not only agreed with her, but thrilled at her passion, values, and desire for social justice. Shut up! Shut up! You're a liar. You're lying to everyone, Matt Damon. And you know it. You know you're lying. And here's why I know you're lying. Now, some of you might not know my, my, my backstory, my history. I grew up in Western Massachusetts. Now, Western Massachusetts, Boston's technically on the other side of the state. So we don't we don't have the full Boston lingo. Okay, you don't get the you don't get the full accent. You don't get that eh, wicked eh, retarded there. Eh. Head on down to have it, yeah. But still, the words come over. We get a little bit of that. There is no way that anyone who grew up in Boston, what, he's 50, so he grew up in what? Uh, the 80s, mostly? 90s? There's no way that anybody who was growing up in that time, existing in that time, never, <laughs> never, not once, not even a single time, used, used this slur. It's It's impossible. He's lying to your face. I swear it. I lived in Boston for two years, three years, I believe. Technically, technically, I was in Cambridge. It's right over the bridge. Same thing. We still use that word. 
as recently as the 2000s, I want to say we were tossing that word around. Am I proud of it? It was the time. It was the time. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of using the same words everybody else was using. What was, we didn't know. We're kids. We're not thinking about uh, offending anybody. Okay? But that's that's the honest truth. Okay? Living in Boston, I swear to God, you go to the Dunkin' Donuts, you go, Hey, let me get a friggin' French cruller, and uh, don't screw up my coffee this time, you friggin' Efsla. All right? <laughs> get it through to your skull. I want a Boston cream. I don't want your Boston cream, you friggin' Efsla. This ain't a gay thing. All right? I want a friggin' donut. I want a large iced coffee. And you put two friggin' sweet and lows in there, or I'm gonna break your skull open with a friggin' claw hammer. All right? And that's how you talk. That's how you talk. You throw that word around constantly. All the words. All the words. We're not a polite people, the Massachusetts people. The mass holes, as they call us. If you ever want a great example of uh, exactly what it's like to be in Massachusetts, there's one video that named uh, nailed it perfectly. SNL Dunkin' Donuts skit. We're not going to watch it right now, but if you watch Casey Affleck hanging out at a Dunkin' Donuts... We are all with the Bruins hat and the jacket and the, yeah, I love getting my friggin' coffee in the morning. This is how everybody talks in Boston, except there's way more cursing. There's way more swears. I promise you, the F slur is, the F slur to this day, I guarantee is still getting tossed around. Matt Damon, who insists he never use the F slur, you're a liar. You're a liar. Just come out, just come out and be honest. Be honest with us, Matt. Don't listen to Twitter. Don't listen to Twitter who says nobody ever changes and things you did in your 20s forever define every part of your life. No. Okay? You come out and you go, listen, people change. We let Mark Wahlberg change. Why are we mad? Why are we mad at at a uh, friggin' Matt Damon when Mark Wahlberg, holy <laughs> I can't even I can't even show this on here. Why are we mad at Matt Damon? I think Mark Wahlberg is is uh, shaking right now. Look at the Matt, uh, let, real quick, Mark Wahlberg. In, in June 1986, 15-year-old Wahlberg and three friends chased after three black children. We're not going to go into what they were yelling. Uh, multiple racial epithets. And then, of course, my favorite, 16-year-old Wahlberg assaults a middle-aged Vietnamese American man on the street, knocking him unconscious with a large wooden stick. Uh, Wahlberg then attacked Johnny Trent, another Vietnamese American, punching him in the eye. And when he was arrested in return of the assault, he says, I'll tell you now, that's the motherfucker whose head I split open. I was high on PCP. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's horrible. Let's give Matt Damon a pass. If you're mad at anybody, be mad at Mark Wahlberg. But don't be mad at Mark Wahlberg. People change. I believe he's even made, uh, you know, concessions to his victims. People change. And that's the ultimate moral of the story. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? First of all, is Matt Damon lying? And the only answer is yes. Anybody who says no, you're an idiot. You know he's lying. Just be real. Should we, however, be mad at Matt Damon for claiming that he's changed? Is it possible for someone who has previously used, used hurtful words to learn a little lesson, to become a little more progressive in, in an older age and change for the better? And should, should we celebrate that? Should we perhaps go, congratulations, Matt? For, uh, for evolving as a human being, for paying more respect to the LGBTQ plus community? Or should we go on Twitter and uh, just make fun of him? I don't know. It's up to you. Tell me in the comments. We got more cool videos coming soon. Take care of yourself. Take care of the people around you. And don't let Mark Wahlberg near any Vietnamese people. He does not like them. <laughs> it's terrible. Go read that story. It's terrible.